Hello, this is Arnhut and today I'm making a short video on the application user class in an ASP.NET Core MVC web application. We're going to do this. We're going to extend the application user class, uh, adding more data to it. By default, it contains uh, a username and password and stuff like this. Suppose we want to track more like the first and last name, birth date or whatever. We have to add it to this class. Uh, then we also have to add it to the registration page to enable the user to actually enter this data. And finally, what if we want to retrieve the data somewhere in the application? Uh, for example, if we want to show the user name or a uh, user first name or last name on a page, then we have to get the application user object. I'll show that as well. And let's get started. So first we're going to create a new project. And it's going to be an ASP.NET Core web application. Uh, let's call it user example. And make it a web application. And we're going to change the authentication to individual user accounts. This gives us a nice login and registration system. And all we have to do is change it. So the class we're looking for is application user in the models folder and we can just extend this by adding properties to it so if we want to uh, keep track of the first name or last name we'll add it here sorry for the loud keyboard and we've added them to this class and you can add anything you want here you can even add uh, links to other classes if you if you want to keep track of a lot of data um, now, if we want to enable the user to enter the first name and last name, we also have to add them to the, excuse me, uh, register view model class over here. I'll just be lazy and copy paste for a bit. So it's not an email address. It's just a simple string. And the way this works is this is actually used um, for the user to enter data. Uh, let's make it required as well, which is then stored into the database and added to this. But uh, we have to first change the view as well. So under account, there is a register view. This is the actual registration page HTML template. And I'll be lazy and copy paste again this form group. Let's add to. And this one is for the first name property. And this one is for the last name property. And ASP.NET will take care of the rest. Now we also have to make sure this data is actually stored into the database. So we have to change the registration method in the account controller. And this is a register method somewhere. Yep, it's here. And here, it's here it actually creates the application user object from what's entered on the page. We can simply add the first name here. So uh, this last name is actually the new application user and the model is the register view model we just edited. Um, so this will be fine. This will be stored into the database. And will this work? No, it won't, because we haven't actually created a database yet. Now, I have the package manager console open by default, um, but okay, let's try first and see what happens if we don't actually create the database. If I'm right, it's going to tell us that we need to create a database first. So I'm going to hit register. Um, register using Arnold Schwarzenegger. And then it's going to give us an error. Yeah, you don't have a database. You can create it by using the package manager console. Now, if you don't have the package manager console, you can get it by going to view, other windows, and then package manager console, click this, and you'll be here. You type the update database command that was shown on the web page. 
and it will generate the database for you. Only problem is it will generate the database um, with the old application user class. So without the first and last name. So we have to wait this out and then add a migration, add migration, um, let's call it uh, user data. And this will generate a script that will add the first and last name to the database. So if we type update database again, then the database will be updated with the first and last name. So let's try it again. Last time we got an error. And this time Arnold Schwarzenegger. This is not actually my name, just to be clear on this. I'm just borrowing it. Um, <clears throat> and will it work? Oh, it worked. We're actually registered. And it has stored our first and last name in the database. Now, what do we want to show it? Uh, let's pick a page like um, the about page um, and change this message. So the about page is generated in the home controller. It's this method. And we need some way to actually get the user first name here to add it to this message. So what we need to do is this. Through the magic of dependency injection, uh, we can first create a private variable of the type user manager application user. Now, it won't recognize these classes, but we can add the namespaces that contain them by simply right click, quick action, and then using Microsoft ASP.NET Core Identity, it will add this line here at the bottom and we can access the class. Also using my models namespace and this works. Now, as I said, through the magic of dependency injection, if we can create a constructor here, public home controller, and we ask for a user manager of type application user, then we will automatically get it. This will be a working user manager. So if we assign it to our private variable, we can access this user manager from all the methods here. So what we need is an application user object here. So Let's call him current user is, and then we'll ask the user manager, I'm sorry, the user manager for the get, um, and what's it called? Get user async method. Now this is one of the many asynchronous methods in ASP.NET Core. The currently logged in principle is called user. It's maybe a bit confusing, but this is actually not an application user object. It just contains the basic security data, not the first name and last name. Um, okay, but this won't work. Why not? It says uh, it cannot complicitly convert a task to an application user. That's because we have to actually type a wait here. And then it will give us another error that we can only use a wait within asynchronous method. So we can only call the asynchronous method within an asynchronous method. And this method is not asynchronous. We can change it by just typing async and have it return a task of I action result. So this may be a bit confusing, but it's actually what it said to do just now when we hovered over the error. And now our current user is filled. So if, for example, the current user is not null, then someone has logged in. And we can send a message like, um, I don't know, hey, current user dot first name. And if someone is not logged in, we'll say, oh, don't know what I'm doing, but hey, anonymous guy. So let's see what happens. 
if we run this. We're already logged in, so if we go to the About page, you'll see our message. Hey, Anud. Great, it works. And if you log off and go to the About page, we'll see a anonymous guy. So that's it. To go over the steps again quickly, what we did was we extended the application user class, which we found here. Then we modified the register view model class and also added the properties there. <coughs> then we also changed the register view and added our input fields there. Then we changed the register method on the account controller class to actually store our new properties into the database. Then in the controller where we wanted to retrieve the data, we added our user manager to the constructor and we automatically get it, it will be assigned. And then um, we used the magic, of, the magic of asynchronous methods to retrieve the current user and display his first name. So that's it for now. I'll say bye bye and I'll be back.